talking about the science of fermented coffee is our kitchen scientist, Dan Kohler, and he's brought along a good friend, microbiologist, uh, Camille, Camille Delabec. Delabec. Hi, Camille. Welcome to our kitchen. <laughs> All right. So what is fermented coffee? Very simply, fermented coffee is coffee that has under, undergone a specific process of decomposition through microbes. What is a microbe? Yeah. yeah. What is, <laughs> what is a microbe? Lost. Okay. <laughs> a microbe comes from Greek, which means... Microvio. Very small life. Yeah, very small life. Micro, vio, life. Thank you. Small Thank you. life. So <laughs> Thank you, Tim. That's a Greek accent. What, are you talking about me again? <laughs> that accent's Greek. It's Greek. It's Greek. Yeah. You already won. Yeah, yeah you already won. The oldest Fine. living yeah. organism on the planet. They're in the water we drink, the food we eat, the air we breathe, and they're actually in our bodies. We, we yeah, couldn't everywhere. live without them, right? Yeah, yeah, on the skin, on you know, guts, everywhere. Right? They're essential yeah. to life. Oh. Now, Camille has figured out a way to brew coffee. I want everybody to taste. You've got just some regular coffee in front of you, and I'm going to pour you some of Camille's coffee. This, this is, is called regular coffee. cultured coffee. Now, the inspiration for this actually comes from something very fascinating called Kopi Luwak. Kopi Luwak is a coffee that comes from the gut of a jungle cat. Hmm. A specific jungle cat? It's called the civet. I think we have a picture of this. That's a cat? Ooh. Oh, wow. Yes. That's a strange Now, wait, he's cat. eating coffee beans. So, what and, happens? And does yes, what so, happens so the, the civet eats the coffee berries, and as the berries pass through its digestive tract, they begin to ferment. Isn't that right, Camille? Yeah. So, so basically, what happens is that in the guts of the cat, you know, a lot of the small microbes are going to start chewing all, on all the flavor molecules. And they're going to take away all the bitterness and all the astringency from the coffee and, you know, leave you with this coffee that is really, really floral, a lot of fruits. Um, and so that's basically what we tried to do in the lab, but without, you know, without the cat. How did they find this out? Who would want to take the yeah. droppings from an animal that, yeah. and say, oh, I think I'm going to make coffee from this. Right. And then, by the way, it happens to be good for you. It's very Great interesting, story. actually. Yeah. So the uh, oh, Java and Sumatra, the country where, where civets live, actually were Dutch mm -hmm. colonies. Mm -hmm. And the Dutch had enslaved the local population to grow coffee for Western Europe. Now, they told all of the local population that they were not allowed to eat the coffee that they were picking. That had to be reserved for the, for the, the farm owners. So the farmers actually then picked up the beans that were left on the ground after the civets ate them because they were forbidden from eating the coffee that they were actually growing themselves. And they discovered that the beans that had passed through the gut of the civet actually were even more flavorful. Okay, so what I'm understanding now from our science lesson is that the actual coffee bean comes out the way it goes in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, yes, All right. exactly, exactly. All right. The coffee now comes out of, the, out, out of the... It's undigested. It's, it's, yeah. it's not what broken happened? down. Well, the, yeah. the cherry, the coffee cherry, uh -huh. that fruit around the bean right. is digested, but the bean itself okay. comes out whole. Right. Yeah. So it makes mm. sense. Still, so have you all tasted the, yeah. yeah. taste the other How, yeah. how does really. the microbe select that astringency to get rid of? Because this is very mellow. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so basically, you know, we did a lot of tries. So we only use natural microbes, but, you know, we specifically select them so that they chew away on those specific flavor molecules that are responsible for wow. bitterness and astringency. Awesome. So it the way I look at this, Camille, at to me, is, is what I would call a food hacker. He's looking, at, mm. he's looking at the building blocks of flavor and figuring out how to fundamentally reconfigure them. Well, how did you? How did you recreate this? Yeah, so, so basically, you know, it's, it's using those green beans that, that we, you know, it's, everyone using, uses them, like the roasters would use them. That's what you, 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 you roast, that's what they look, look like just before uh, the cooking process that makes okay. all the... Uh, the These cooking. are raw. Okay. These are raw, basically, uh -huh. yeah. And so we, we add some specific microbes on them, uh, and they're going to chew away those flavor molecules that are not really interesting. Um, and so then after that, you cook them. It's called the roasting process. Um, and they look like that, basically. And as you can see, you know, the, this is a control. So basically, these are the fermented ones. Fermented and, ones, okay. And these ones are the infermented ones, non-fermented ones, I guess. Okay, non-fermented. You can, you can smell, like right. the, it smells really, yeah. really different. These have too. passed through? No, no, okay, no. Just make everything sure. is really clean in oh, lab. Yeah. Um, it's all natural. Mm. Um, so what yeah. we're drinking didn't really pass through. No, no, no. It's, it's just, just you know, it's, the thing about here is that Camille basically figured out how to replicate that yeah, flavor that yeah. without without using the cats. Because now, sure. what used to be a natural process, these these civets used to just naturally eat these berries, but because the coffee was so coveted, they then were put in cages and they were forced to eat these cherries. And so, Kopi Luwak, which is the most expensive coffee in the world, it can be eighty dollars a $80. cup, okay. is now really detrimental to the animal population. It's horribly oh, uh, manufactured. Right. So the great thing about microbial interaction in food is that we can now 
flavor our food without any artificial interaction. Right. You know when you go to the grocery store now and you see things on the shelves that say hazelnut flavor this or 50% or yeah. sweeter than mm -hmm. the other yeah. one? Well, a lot of times that's achieved through artificial chemicals, right. artificial sure. sweeteners, right. things that we don't really want to be putting in our body. Right. But because microbes are everywhere and they are fundamental to cheeses, they're fundamental to yogurts, this is really the difference between grape juice and wine, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Oh, awesome. That's how you change the flavor. Yeah. 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 You it's mentioned, microbes. though, that you took the beans and you put microbes in them. Yeah. So what does a microbe look like? What What is it? It's, 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 it's tiny, tiny, tiny. So, so, so um, uh, yeah, it, it basically just stays on the surface of the beans and, 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 and choose from, like, choose away the, the flavor. Particle? Microbes. Is it alive? Is yeah, it, it, it looks it's like, like a, a small, a yeah. small um, worm. Worm, if yeah. you yeah. wish. Yeah. 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 I see. Yeah. Okay. If we have that's, some pictures, we can roll them in. Okay, we, let's we, see. Do we have those still up? No, we don't have no? them. Okay, well, no, we, we don't have them. We got rid of those. Okay. Well, imagine, I mean, if you saw, if you were looking under a microscope and you yeah. saw a cell or you saw a, yeah. a germ like we look at uh, for infectious purposes, but my presumption, and just correct me, yeah. is that once you roast this, those microbes are Everything, gone. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, so, I mean, we, they would, we're not at any know. risk for being exposed. No, to no, no, okay. no, no, no. But I mean, if, even if you were to you know, eat the raw microbes, you'd be fine. But, but yeah. the, the final product is pasteurized. Are there health benefits to this? There, there are, actually. So yeah, it's much be, you know, it's beyond the flavor. You, you, it's a healthier coffee because basically the microbes choose away uh, all the, um, the molecules that are responsible for all these upset stomach that about you know 20 percent of coffee drinkers uh, experience right, yeah. From the that the acid? Uh, well, a lot of people yeah. it's yeah. all the acid, acid you know yeah. Um, yeah. and so, so beyond that it's also more anti antioxidant more vitamin d mm. um, so yeah it, it's a healthier right. coffee it's well. sort of in the same way that we look at yogurt as being a healthier a healthier product than just straight milk right because it's undergone this microbial process it's got more probiotics it's got it's got more gut flora and that's that's what, that's what we're really doing with this coffee here. So this is actually healthy for us. That's well, it's healthy. It's healthy. It's healthier. Healthier. We're going to put more information on our website. You can go to um, uh, kitchenrenegade.com and you can get a bunch of stuff from there. Yeah. Yeah. I have to find out what to do with my forest yes. cat now. I don't know what to do. We're going to come back. Paige, your turn. Well, I have a question. I have three cats at home. Do you think I can do this there? <laughs> no, but I do have an entry bench that I'm going to show you guys about. Just as exciting. Come on back. <laughs>